before even unboxing these shoes i want to say that i like everything about them well not everything but i'm gonna get to that hi everybody this is sir pierre back on our day with another unboxing with a pair of shoes that i hmm, where to start so let's start at the beginning which uh, Nike did not do so the, the first thing that I really like about uh, the Nike Airship or the Jordan Nike Airship or even Jordan Airship uh, is that these shoes to me is the perfect evidence how the sneaker community uh, affect uh, Nike and the company okay the letter wasn't as great as uh, expected so let me as normal for my videos start with the nerdy info about the shoes so um, MGA 23 then did a post at Soul Collector I think it was uh, a written post where he found out himself that the first pair of shoes that Jordan played in, Michael Jordan, uh, in the NBA, wasn't the Air Jordan 1. And the pair of shoes that were banned, not banned, but that they had to pay fees to NBA for not having enough white in them, it wasn't the banned Air Jordan 1, the black and red, the breads. Uh, it was the Nike Air ship. And the first, I don't know, I'm going to post uh, all the videos. I'm going to do a blog post and with the whole airship history. But like the first eight games or ten games or something, he played in these. That sort of look like the Air Jordan 1. Let me get the pair. So this is the Air Jordan 1 that we call uh, bad because this were for 35 years uh, these were the shoe that were banned by NBA but it was not it was this shoe and just because of not having enough white in them on them but Nike did the whole they, they saw the marketing opportunity in that and went all the way with that and that worked absolutely uh, for 35 plus years and now 40 years almost 40 years later Still, the Air Jordan 1 is a super cool shoe in every way. So, uh, thanks to the sneaker community, this guy, one of the best sneaker vloggers, YouTubers out there, absolutely, uh, found out from some pictures that it was this shoe. And might not be just exactly like this, um, and in the air movie we realized they didn't say anything about it but we realized that the shoe that they were putting the Jordan name on were already done sort of at the Nike lab um, so they just put his name on it and they went with that in the beginning but the Nike airship was a slimmer, lighter model of the Air Force One, more or less. Since 1982, the Nike Air Force One was the basketball shoe. It was the number one basketball shoe. Uh, but it's a clumsy shoe, big shoe. And for some basketball players, I think centers or something, I don't know, they needed a lighter shoe. And then they had the airship that was a Air, sorry, Air Force One on a diet, sort of. And Michael Jordan played it and probably liked it because then we got the Air Jordan 1 shoe that is very similar. Uh, 
So yeah. So that's one of the many things that I like about the airship. Uh, I want to give this guy all the cred because I don't think Nike have done that in any way. Nike used for 35 plus years said that this was the first shoe, this was the band shoe, this is Michael Jordan's first shoe, or uh, it is his first shoe, but the first shoe he played in, etc. etc. So these are called PE, uh, player edition. So from that we can assume that during these first eight or ten games, Michael Jordan found some things that he wanted um, be better, I want to change, modified with the air chip. And uh, so that's why this version, I don't know what the standard air chip is, what it look, looks like. Oh, sorry, I know what it looks like, but I don't have it. I'm going to get to that as well. Uh, so this is called PE as player exclusive. Uh, player edition, whatever. The suede is nice. The suede is nice. The leather is uh, better than... So, backing it up again. The airship got retroed and I wanted... I don't remember what the first one was, but it was not the bread one, I'm pretty sure. And then they released the bread one, I didn't get it. Then they released a package which were uh, Air Jordan 1 with an uh, airship, I think, or was it two airship in that box? I don't remember. I didn't get that either. Then they released the every game, uh, which I hope will be the bike air. Yes, bike air. That would be so cool. I didn't get those either. And then we have this one that many say is just excellent. And Nightwing, uh, Wear Testers, another great uh, sneaker, YouTuber, vlogger that makes me buy a lot of shoes that I don't like from the beginning. He absolutely loved these shoes. So he pointed out some things. Uh, for example, that on the sides here, we have the stretch material. Which means that guys like me that have a wide foot, these will probably be the best shoes for wide foot people like me. The leather is good. Uh, I don't want to complain about that at all. The suede is super soft. It's really great. And now to the best thing and the thing that I don't like. So, the price for these, I don't remember the price for the first airship, but for these are $140. And I, I think that is great. Uh, so, let me explain. This is going to get really nerdy. For many years, a dollar is seven Swedish kroners. So, a pair of Air Jordan 1s were think were the mids yeah the mids cost 1100 kroners and the highs cost 1300 kroners which is sort of 140 dollars then the highs went to 1700 kroners and they were there for a while but the mids stayed at those 1100 kroners uh, and the mids then also gained course but when the first airships that got retro or released now the the leather were like a pair of air jordan one mids that pleather material so i hope that for the price 140 those shoes the airship would be the new uh, cheaper air jordan one it will be the new air jordan one mid in the price range so I was really looking forward to that because I think people are supposed to be able to buy the shoes. And uh, when the material were great on the uh, every game ones, both the blue ones and the red ones, 
and they did this thing where they were not supposed to be uh, you were not supposed to be able to buy them online only in store and these were just dropped out of now uh, out of nowhere I haven't seen them on Nike I haven't seen them in the sneakers app I bought them from from a few uh, so I think they do a, some some cool things with the uh, Jordan now Jordan airship and so to get to the negative point which is absolutely not some Nike falls in any way so the Air Journal 1 high went from this is the 2012 2013 2012 I think this was 1300 kroners uh, and then we went to 1700 kroners then when the other Air Jordan ones or sorry the other other Air, Air Jordan were 2250 kroners the the ones were always cheaper now the Air Jordan ones are as 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 expensive as the other Air Jordan models and the spider verse I paid 2000 580 something let's say 2600 kroners that's a lot of money for a pair of Air Jordan 1 and the quality on those were worse than these these are excellent compared to, to, to the, to the Spider-Verse so to get to the point sorry I talked way too much $140 great price I believe that in Europe the price is 150 euro uh, and with shipping these were 159 euro so the price should be like the old price of the Air Jordan 1 but with our Swedish Krona now being so bad the $140 pair of shoes cost me 2000 kroners which is more than the Air Jordan 1 used to cost which is the price of the Air Jordan 1 more or less um, but for a pair of shoes that I like that I think are comfortable I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear them all day tomorrow that the material is good I don't want to complain absolutely not it used that uh, Nightwing were super hyped about the material but material is good not bad at all it's just not great but once again $140 it's just that for me in Sweden 2000 kroners it's a bit much even even the sole is soft so I don't want to complain at all. I just want to complain about our Swedish krona, the Swedish value of our, or the money, the value of our money is crap. The shoes are great. The pricing is great. The history is cool. The whole thing that they do with not selling them online, with not selling them everywhere, we're not selling them on the Nike app, in the sneakers app. I think that is great. Uh, and selling them with the great quality I like it all I like it all and the whole bike ear thing uh, which I hope you you have seen Nigel Sylvester the BMX guy he has his friends and family shoes bike ear instead I'm probably gonna post pictures of that so yeah nice shoe nice price I like him I don't have anything to complain about the shoe itself. I don't. And that's that's rare. It's used a Swedish price. That's it. But cool, nice thing. And I think I'm just guessing here because Nike doesn't tell any stories anymore at all. The airship the Nike airship are in one way. And these, that is called PE as well, are the ones that are called Jordan Airship 
or I even think they're called Jordan Nike Airship. And um, that is sort of wrong, but I get it. Uh, because, yeah, this is great. Nike Airship PE. But I'm pretty sure, why are they called Jordan? They're called Jordan somewhere. Airship PE. Yeah, Jordan Airship P P E S P, special project even. So okay, so this is a modified uh, Nike Airship for Michael Jordan. Not this colorway. He never played in this colorway, but uh, the the model, the version of the shoe. I like it. I like it all. And here we have the whole story about the shoe. That is great. So I take back complaining about Nike not telling the story about the shoe. Uh, it doesn't say anything. It doesn't say anything at all about being the shoe Michael Jordan played in. No, nothing at all. Uh, but we have the jump man, and yeah, it is a it is an official now Jordan shoe. Thirty five years after, I keep saying thirty five. I don't know the year the year she came out. It must have been like 83, 84. Yeah, so almost 40 years um, later. It is now a Jordan shoe. And that's after a sneaker head found out that the first pair of shoes that Michael Jordan played in the Chicago Bulls in wasn't this shoe it was this shoe but in black and red i think that's it i think that's it i talk way too much used one set of laces nice color of the laces they are not clear white they are sort of that sail white I have nothing to complain about except from our Swedish Krona. Gray and white and not clear white, it's sort of off white, sort of. Great shoe, great shoe. Happy to have it. It's just that $140 are now 2000 Kroners when $140 used to be literally a thousand kronos so a couple of years ago these would cost me half the price yeah but i hope they will release um the breads again uh, the black and red the band one maybe do something cool with it call them band maybe put an x in the heel uh no actually just drop them again I want them. I really want them. I must have them, but I, I will not pay resale. Thanks for watching me talk way too much about sneakers, but I love sneakers. I have this huge passion in life about shoes and sneakers and the history about them. My whole blog, my whole YouTube channel is about teaching you and spreading my interest about the shoes they are not supposed to be sort of a stock that you buy and sell for the best value use your shoes wear your shoes i only wear them once but still ah here we have extra laces sorry i'm too tired i i just realized i'm too tired i didn't even notice that we had extra laces with the shoes that's it Good night. I want to add one other thing that I like about the shoes. Uh, that are... Yeah, I really like this. They don't go for resale money. Uh, I, act, I, I actually think that if I would buy them from StockX, I would get them cheaper than from a retailer. I think so, in Europe. So that's another great thing about the shoe. Good price great quality no resale and they are here all thanks to the sneaker community man i love this yeah i i, I hope to wear them a lot actually
they are actually more comfortable than expected, more comfortable than Air Jordan 1. I would say because of the tongue. Uh, it's thick, soft, and as I said, the leather is well, is good. So I really like them. No complaints at all. 